Hi, today is going to be exciting. We're going to actually go through a quick tutorial on how to use the graphing calculator. So this is a TI-84 plus graphing calculator. Here at the bottom left hand corner of the calculator, you're going to have your on button. I'm going to go ahead and quit because I was working on something in statistics. Um, before you get started, one of the things that you want to do in case you're doing problems in geometry or trigonometry, like finding sine, cosine, tangent, and you want to make sure that you are in degree mode, you have to come here to mode. And then right now it is in degree mode. I can tell because it's highlighted, but a lot of times by default, the calculator um, is in radian mode. So if that were the case to select for you to go into degree mode, just come down to highlight it, go over to degree and press enter. By pressing enter, you're actually choosing to be in degree mode. To get out, you're going to put second mode, which is quit. Anything that you see in blue, you have to press the blue button. And anything that you see in green, you have to press the alpha green button. That kind of should be intuitive and make sense. Another thing that I want to show you is in the statistics how you can enter numbers. So right now I go to stat, I go to edit, and then notice that I have a lot of values already in here because I was working on calculations. So one of the things that I can do is go up to the actual list. They're called lists, and I'm going to press clear, enter, and that's going to take everything off the list for me. Watch what happens if I go over and instead of going clear enter, I press delete. If I press delete, the entire list is actually gone. So you're like, uh oh, what do I do now? I deleted my list. Well, don't worry. Go to stat. You go down to where it says setup editor and you press enter and you press enter again and it says done. Once it says done and you go to stat edit, you're going to see that it brings back the entire list and it actually brought everything back with it, all the data. So don't freak out in case you do delete a list by accident. You can always bring it back by going to stat, setup editor. Okay. And then you go ahead and press enter twice until it says done. And then you go back into stat edit and there you go. But right now I'm going to go ahead and clear the list by going up and pressing clear enter because I want a nice little clean work area so that I can show you how to do the rest of these functions. We are going to start by calculating mean, median, mode, and things like that. So I'm going to go back here to list one. I'm going to pull up a problem that we did. So we have Michael's test scores are as follows, 74, 96, 88, um, 79, 94, 95, 88, 94. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and enter these values into my calculator. So I want to be able to show you how they're coming in here. So I'm going to go ahead to the calculator. I'm going to put 74. Of course, it disappears. <laughs> Let me bring it back. So it's 74, 96, 88. So I'm going to put 74, enter. And you're going to see it come here. 96, enter. 88, enter. The next numbers are 74, 96, 88, 79, 94, 95, 79, enter, 94, enter, 95, enter. You should be doing this in your calculator as I'm doing it on the calculator. 88 and 94. So then 88, enter, 94, enter. So that's my list of values that I'm working with. Notice that the calculator tells me that right here, L19, that means that the calculator is waiting for you to enter the ninth number in the list. That means that we have entered eight numbers already, which is great because a lot of times you're going to be dealing with long lists of data and you don't want to sit there and count up to see that you have them all. So if I do right now, just to check, just to show you, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight values inputted. It's waiting for the ninth one. If I go to my PowerPoint, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure enough, I have all eight numbers already here. So what can I do with the calculator? I'm going to go to stat, which is statistics. I go over to calculations or calculate, and I'm going to choose right now one variable statistics because I'm only dealing with one variable. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Now I'm working with list one. Right now it says list five. By default, most calculators will say list one, but just in case yours doesn't, by the way, the way you choose a list is going second one. Do you see the L1 here in blue? L2, L3, L4, L5, L6. That's how you can do it. Now, what's a frequency list? A frequency list is any number that is associated with a frequency. So let's say I were to ask you how many brothers and sisters you have. I could go around one person at a time. And if I have 30 students in my class, I would have 30 numbers that I would have to enter in a list. But instead, what I could do 
is consolidate. How many people said they're only children? That means they have zero siblings. Let's say 10. How many people have one brother or one sister? Uh, two. How many people have two brothers and sisters? Seven, like that. And so those would be frequencies. So sometimes when you go to stat edit, I would put here, let's say zero, one, two, three, four, five, because that's how many siblings they have. And here I would put the frequencies. And that's what is meant by um, when you go to calculate, if there is a frequency list. Right now we do not have one. So if we don't have one, make sure that this is clear. Because if you have something in here, then the calculator is gonna assume that those frequencies are related to your values and right now they're not. I just want those eight numbers to be calculated. So I come down and I press calculate. When I press enter, look at all the plethora of information that the calculator gives me. It gives me the average, automatically it's 88.5. It tells me the sum of all the values is 708. So if you have to show your work, the sum is 708 divided by eight numbers is equal to 88.5, that's the average. If I scroll down, the calculator also gives me what's called the five number summary, which is the minimum value, 74. The lower quartile Q1 is 83.5, the median is 91, the third quartile is 94.5, and the max is 96. So it's ma it makes calculations a lot easier. One of the things that we haven't really talked about, but we will, is standard deviation. For IB purposes, we're always gonna work with population standard deviation, which is this little sigma x. So in questions that are involving standard deviation, when they ask you that, you would give the answer to three significant figures, approximately 7.58. This is sample standard deviation for any of you who are taking a regular statistics course, and there is a difference between sample and population. For IB purposes, for IB math applications and interpretation, you will always be working with population standard deviation. So that all came from just going stat, calc, one variable statistic, selecting list one, and look at the data, look at all the information that we got just from that one little function, okay? So that's easy stuff so far. So when I pull up the answer key for this particular problem, notice that the average is 708 divided by um, eight, which is 88.5, that's exactly what I got. The median is 91, and the mode is 88 and 94. Notice that the calculator did not give me the mode, and one of the things that I can do though is put the um, data in order from increasing, in increasing order from smallest to largest. So let me show you how to do that. When you go to stat, and you go back to like this menu here, you're going to see sort A. Sort A is to sort in ascending order, smallest to largest. Sort D means to sort in descending order, largest to smallest. And clear list will actually clear the list, like the same way we went to each list and we press clear enter, except here you have to separate them by uh, commas. Maybe I'll show you that a little bit later. So then here I'm gonna go to sort A, I'm gonna press enter and I have to tell which list I wanna sort. So I'm gonna sort list one and I do that by pressing second one. So I press enter and it says done. So when I go back to stat edit and I look at my list, notice that all my numbers are arranged in increasing order, which is lovely because now when I go to find the mode, I can tell that there's two 88s and there's two 94s. So my mode is 88 and 94. So even though when I go to stat calc one variable statistic, it doesn't explicitly tell me the mode because it doesn't. I can organize the data in increasing order to make it a little bit easier for me. Another thing that I want to show you for the calculator is for the chi-square calculations. When you want to input the values for your observed frequencies, this contingency table, you're going to put it in as a matrix. So in the calculator, you go second matrix which is second X to the negative one, and it's gonna give you a matrix. Now you're gonna go over and you're gonna to go to edit, and you're gonna press enter. Here you're going to enter the dimensions of the matrix. This matrix is three by three. There are three rows, rows go left to right, and there's three columns. Let's say this matrix were two by three, then you would notice that it's gonna open up two rows and three columns. Let's say it's two by two, then it's just gonna open up a two by two matrix um, in case oh okay I made a mistake I want to go back and fix it all you have to do is go back and then I can say okay I want this to be a three by three matrix so then it opens it up to the spacing that you need so I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna copy the values 136 I have to add 24 so I just press enter because that one is correct 36 is correct but this one is 24 by the way in case they were not correct and you want to type over all you have to do is do that type over 
um, the values. You don't have to even press delete. So then 40, enter, 10, enter, 90, enter, 50, enter, 25, enter. Okay, so that's basically putting the data, the observed frequencies into the calculator. So now I go stat, I go over to test, I'm going to go up to option C, which is the chi-square test, okay, chi-square test, because there is a chi-square goodness of fit test, but the one we want right now is the chi-square test of independence. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. It's going to ask me, where did I put my observed values? You don't remember, but we did use matrix A, so that's fine. Where do you want the expected frequencies in matrix B? It sounds good to me. And then just go ahead and go to calculate. So then when I press enter, the calculator is going to give me the chi-square calculated value of 7.096. It's also going to tell me the degrees of freedom. So if we go back to our nodes from chi-square, you're going to see that one of the things we did have to find was the chi-square calculated value. Okay, so the chi-square calculated value here was 7.096 after all these calculations, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And I also had to figure out the degrees of freedom, which I found by doing um, the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one, which we did get four. So look at all the information that the calculator is already giving to you by just going stat test chi-square. So it gives me the chi-square calculated value. Now the calculator is also going to give you those expected frequencies that you had to calculate. And if you remember to find expected frequencies, you have to do row total times column total divided by grand total. So it's a lot of work, especially like in this one's three by three and it's long. So how does the calculator just give me these values? Very simple. After you've already done the test, because remember we already did the test, I'm going to go ahead and go back to matrix, second matrix, and then I go to edit and I go down to matrix B and I press enter and there are all my values. Okay, so you can see that it matches exactly what I have here on my screen. So it's exactly what I have, and it just gives it to me beautifully. Um, so if you don't have to show work, or if it's the IB exam and they just kind of want your answer, you can just get it this way without having to do such um, so much so many calculations. But in the likelihood that you do have to show your work, because you will have to show your work when you go to do your project, your IA, this whole thing about pho, phi, pho minus phi, pho minus phi squared, pho minus phi squared divided by phi, the calculator will help you so you're not sitting there manually having to subtract each one of these one by one. Because if you had to sit there and go 100 minus this, take the answer, then square it, then divide it by the expected, I mean, it's a lot of work. So the calculator will do that for you. Let me show you how. The first thing we're going to have to do, however, is that we are going to have to enter under stat edit okay so stat edit our value so remember to clear this i'm going to go ahead and go up to the list i press clear enter and now i want to make sure that i enter my expected frequencies okay so my expected frequencies are i'm trying to find a smaller one they're right here they're easy to tell right now so they're 100 enter i'm going to go ahead and read across so that I am consistent and entering my values. It doesn't really matter. You just have to be consistent so that you're matching apples to apples. So 136, 24, press enter, 70, press enter, 40, press enter, 10, press enter, 90, press enter, 50, press enter, and 25 press enter. So again, I am ready to receive, the calculator is ready to receive the 10th value, which means I did put in all nine values. Okay, so I'm good. I'm going to use the right arrow to go over to list two and under list two, I'm going to now enter the expected frequencies. So the expected frequencies are 93.483. You got to press enter 45.303. Hopefully you're doing this in your calculator at the same time I'm doing this. 21.213. Press enter, 70.112, press enter, 33.978, press enter, 15.91, press enter, 96.404, press enter, 
press enter 46.719, press enter 21.876. Okay, so now I go ahead and I press enter and I have all my values. Make sure that these match, because if not, you're gonna get an error message that says dimensions mismatch, the calculator is trying to match them up and they're not aligning because let's say you're short one number or you have an extra number. So now here's where the fun begins. Instead of going 100 minus 93.43 and figuring that out, the calculator will do all this for you automatically. How? Go over to list three. You have to go up to highlight list three. And you're going to tell list three to take all the numbers from list one and subtract all of its corresponding numbers from list two. Second, one minus second, two. As you type in the bottom of your screen, you'll see what you're entering. So now when you press enter, it populates all of those values. Isn't that amazing? It's so cool. It's such a time saver. So then it goes fo, phi, fo minus phi, fo minus phi squared. Whatever I got from here, I now have to square it. So I'm going to go over to list four, go up to highlight list four, and tell list four to go second, three, list three, and square it. Again, I'm trying to square this list. So I press enter and it goes ahead and it squares everything for me. So I go over to list five, fo, phi, fo minus phi, fo minus phi squared, fo minus phi squared divided by phi, which means I have to take everything from list four and divide it by list two. So I'm gonna go up. If you don't go up to highlight, it's not gonna work. So I have to go up to highlight the list, second list four, minus, I'm sorry, not minus, divided by list two, okay? And then you press enter. And voila, this is all the work that you have to show. To figure out the chi-square calculated value, you have to add up all of this data. So I go stat, calc, one variable statistic for list five. I want the sum of list five, and so when I get the sum, 7.0956 is my chi-square calculated value. When I go stat, uh, test, chi-square calculated value, the chi-square test of independence, and I press enter, 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 then you see that this matches exactly what I got, which is awesome because I definitely want to get those same values.